so yeah so let's start our session today uh today we are going to discuss uh, the continuation of this associative arrays so in previous session we have uh, seen what is mean by this associative arrays everything we have introduced it with the uh, array, associative arrays and we have also discussed the differences between the dynamic arrays with associative arrays and the other type of arrays so today we will conclude our discussion on uh, associative arrays so we will see the built in methods which are available in associative arrays okay so coming to the built in methods uh, the first method is dot num so basically it will return the number of elements currently stored in the associative array okay so basically this using this method we can actually know how many number of elements are stored in this associative, associative array for example if we have declared a associative array uh, of int data type and index is of string okay and if you want to know how many elements are present in this particular associative array just you can simply write dollar display number of elements uh, is percentage d comma associative array dot num so you, uh, like this you are going to use this uh, built in method num so what you should do is uh, you should write the array name array name followed by dot function name okay dot function name this is a syntax for using built in functions okay so array name is associative array in this case dot num is a function name built in function so this will basically return the number of elements which are present in the associative array okay next next uh, type of built in function is first first of var so basically it will finds and returns the first index in the associative array if the array is empty it returns zero or an empty value for example if you have declared associative array uh, say asos underscore array uh, like this so yesterday we have discussed it right we have non contiguous memory locations we, we will have different uh, type of non contiguous memory locations created so if you want to know what is the first memory location which has been created we can use simply the uh, method called first for getting the uh, first index value we should provide the index value here. okay so the first index is percentage s comma index so you can provide here and the value of index then you will get the uh, first index in the associative array okay next coming to last var so basically uh, this will finds and returns the last index in the associative array if the array is empty it will return zero or empty value similar to first uh, which returns the first index value here uh, the last will return the last index value that's it okay next coming to next uh, basically this will find the next index after the given index in the associative array for example uh, here the string index is equal to key one okay so index is key one and if associative underscore array dot next of index dollar display next index percentage is comma index for example uh, if we have a associative array like this with non contiguous memory locations so this is our first memory location this is our fifth memory location followed by eighth memory location okay so here if we apply this no, dot next operate uh, built in function then it will return the next index value that is eighth okay so like this it is going to return the uh, value okay finds the next index after the given index in the associative array okay up to this is it clear for everyone Is this clear, right? Can we move forward? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Next is previous value. Similar to next uh, built-in function, we have previous value. To find the previous value of the, uh, uh, so to find the previous index before the given index in the associative array. Okay. So here, uh, in this case, what is the previous value? That is the third index. It will return. Okay, so using this previous, we can get the previous value and delete. So basically, this is used to delete an element, remove or remove an element from the associative array at a specific index. So if we want to delete a index called key one, then we can uh, simply write the array name followed by dot delete of key one. So it will delete element with index key one. Okay, so you should provide the index value. What happens if you have not provided the index value? 
if you write simply a source underscore array dot delete what happens in this case can you all try to answer this question i'm not providing it will delete, any it will not. delete entire the data in the associate array right okay so entire associative array will be deleted okay if we have not provided any index value entire array will be will get deleted okay next is exists so basically this method will check if an element exist in the associative array for the given index or not okay so if it will check an element exist in the associative array for the given index so basically uh, for example if we write asos underscore array dot exists of key one so it will go to the index key one and it will check whether the uh, key one index exists or not okay if it exists this statement will be displayed or else this statement will be displayed okay since the associative array uh, is non contiguous and different memory locations will be present so we can use this method exist to find out whether the particular memory location is uh, present or not okay next so these are some of the methods which are present in our associative arrays which we will see uh, with the help of uh, which we will try to understand with the help of coding also don't worry so this is all the theory part so uh, we have seen all the built in functions and all the theory part of the packed arrays unpacked arrays dynamic arrays queues and associative arrays we have seen all the built in methods as well as theory part of this so in our next session we will see all the uh, how to implement this uh, functions actually and uh, through coding okay so in our next session we will see that now we will see the summary of all these methods in brief so coming to the summary of array types the first one is dynamic arrays so basically uh, arrays with a variable size determined at run time okay so can anyone tell me what is meant by run time Okay, so if you are not aware about the runtime and compile time, so please uh, do watch the previous session recordings. We have discussed what is meant by runtime and compile time. So it's very important to know these definitions. Uh, what is meant by runtime and what is meant by compile time? So please watch that. So uh, dynamic arrays, arrays with variable size, determined in the runtime, and the applicable methods uh, for this dynamic array are size, delete. delete of index if you provide any index the particular value associated with that index will be deleted or delete of uh, without index entire array will be deleted and sort this we haven't discussed and reverse also we haven't discussed shuffle min max find with unique this we will discuss with the help of coding okay we will see what are this and coming to associative arrays these are the arrays indexed by an arbitrary integral type example int string Okay, and the applicable methods are num, exist, delete, delete with no argument, and first, last, next, previous. Okay, next comes the queues, which are ordered variable sized lists supporting push and pop operations. What is meant by push and pop operations? What is meant by push operation? Ah, uh, nothing but uh, entering the data into the. Q. Pop means uh, getting the data out from the queue. Right. Push is nothing but we can say inserting it, and pop yeah. is nothing but we can say deleting the data from the queue. So what happens if we insert any data? Whether the size of the queue will increase or decrease? Increase, right? Obviously, it will increase. And if we do the pop operation, the size of the queue will be decreased dynamically. This is a very important keyword you should use. Okay, dynamically. it will increase or decrease okay dynamical nature you should show and the applicable methods in this queue are size push underscore front you should provide any item push underscore back item so in this push underscore front do we uh, okay 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 yeah and uh, pop underscore front pop underscore back insert index comma item and uh, delete index 
sort, reverse, shuffle, min, max, find with, and unique. Now, uh, in this push underscore front and push underscore back, do we provide index value? No, we won't provide any index value there. Directly, it will just uh, front mention. Here only we have special index value. So only one argument is present. Whereas in case of insert, two arguments are present: index and item. Okay. Next. Uh, next, coming to array manipulation summary. So we have size which is a uh, user to return the number of elements and it can be used in dynamic arrays, queues, as well as we can also use in associative arrays. And insert of index comma item, which inserts an item at a specific index, which is used in queues. Okay. And delete of index, we can use in dynamic arrays, queues and associative arrays. Delete, which deletes all the elements, which can be used in all the three types of arrays. Pop underscore friend removes and returns the first element, which is which can be used in queues. Pop underscore back, push underscore friend item, push underscore back item. These are all related to queues. Okay. Pop underscore back will remove and retains the last element. Push underscore friend adds an element in the front of the queue. Push underscore back adds an element to the back of the queue. Okay. And num will return the number of elements. Okay. This is for associative array. First var returns the first index, last var returns the last index, next var returns the next index of the given associative var. And previous var will use the previous uh, index, exist will check if the index exists, sort will actually uh, sort all the elements in ascending order. This we will see with the help of coding. Uh, and reverse will reverse the order of elements, shuffle will basically shuffle the elements in random order, that, that also we will see that. And minimum will find the uh, minimum element in this uh, array. Okay. And maximum will find the maximum element. Okay. How to use this max? Let's say I have a dynamic array. How to use this max built in function? Built in function? It's actually return type. No? So we need to assign max to an, another variable. Like if you take an int a, for yeah. that we uh, a equal to array name dot max function. Yes, dot match and it should be stored in some variable, right? This we will see through coding also. Okay? Next, find with. So it will find the first element that satisfies a condition. So this is about all the array methods and all the different types of arrays which are present in system. Level. Okay. So up to here, uh, everything is clear. Is everything okay? Okay. Uh, in uh, associate array, it's a non-contiguous array. So you can use this EDA playground for coding of uh, system wedlock. Uh, so how to use it? Uh, it's a simple uh, interface. You can just simply go to Google and type EDA playground. And you can sign up with uh, your Google account or you can create an account. And here in the left side, uh, you can find languages and libraries and tools and simulators. So in tools and simulators, just uh, uh, select the option all deck Riveria, uh, uh, okay, pro. So it's a open source tool, open source simulator. Uh, with the help of that, you can do the coding, okay. And one more option which is present is uh, downloading a tool, uh, which is which what I'm using is Questa Sim, okay. So this is similar to Model Sim, so. Do you have any idea about this interface? Anyone? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So let me explain this briefly so that we can start with the coding uh, from next session. So this is the interface. When we open our Questa Sim tool, uh, you can create a file using the file option which is present. Uh, you can go to new and in this you can create a project or folder or source in the source, you have VHDL, Verilog, and System Verilog. Okay, so we are going to see about System Verilog. So I have selected that. So a SV file will be created. You can, and after writing the code, you can simulate it by 
selecting the simulate option and you can press on start simulation and here you uh, you can find your file in the work directory so you should uh, select your module name and you can just simply click enter okay now what happens is uh, you should wait for some few seconds yeah so this type of interface will uh, will be opening yeah. it's still loading So this is the interface you will be getting uh, after you simulate your particular module and you can just simply uh, click the run button which is present here run all and uh, since this is a uh, example project there is no waveform coming here so in next session when we uh, try any example we will see and this is actually a console where we will see our outputs so I hope uh, the screen is visible right. This is somewhat smaller. Wait a minute. Yeah. This is a console actually. So in this console you can see all the outputs or all the display statements which you have written in your code. Like this you will, you will be getting all the outputs or display statements which you have written inside your code. Okay. So you can use any of the tool. You can use whether EDA playground or Questasim, no issue. Uh, so from tomorrow's, from next session, we'll start with the coding. Okay. So if you are having any particular doubts or queries,